Welcome to another episode of Science Over Coffee. About a hundred years ago, bacteria spread through a cough or an open wound could easily kill us. Thanks to antibiotics, that's no longer the case. But bacteria are fighting back. New strains of bacteria, known as superbugs, are developing resistance to antibiotics. The problem is so serious that the World Health Organization has highlighted this as one of the greatest threats to human health. Today we speak with Professor Matt Cooper about superbugs and potential solutions to this developing problem. So Matt, tell me, how do normal bacteria uh, evolve to develop resistance to antibiotics? This is all about evolution, and if you think about it, evolution is driven by selection pressures. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a normal bacterium, it can be quite happy doing what it's doing. You provide a selection pressure, in this case an antibiotic, that will kill off the resistant bacteria, but because of mutation, because of the power of Darwinism, there could be one or two bacteria left behind that evolve these genes. Now those will then multiply very quickly, um, they'll have sex with each other, pass their DNA to each other, and so they're very promiscuous in passing resistance along. So quite quickly, in a matter of you know days, you can go from a normal bacteria problem to a superbug problem. We've heard a bit of, in the media about superbugs. Um, what happens if these superbugs start to spread and become more common? What are the consequences for us? Yeah, so we're not going to all die tomorrow. If we don't act and just carry on drinking coffee and taking it easy, um, by 2050, there'll be 23,000 deaths a year in Australia. It'll cost the world economy $100 trillion. Every week, this, you know, today in Australia, every week, 170 Australians die from bacterial sepsis. So this is something that's just going up and up and up over time. Uh, if we don't start to add now, for my children or my children's children, we're going to have a serious issue. So antibiotics are great for targeting um, these bad bacteria in our body. Um, can you tell me, uh, do they have any negative effects on our body? They do. The effects, the deleterious effects are more community based and longer term. So it's like climate change, right? We're struggling to deal with climate change politically and globally because it's a complex area and it's not my problem. The same with, uh, with antibiotics. You know, it's one of those few medicines. If I take too many of them and I overuse them for my kids and for the community, that will be a problem. For you personally, though, there can be implications as well. So inside your gut, you've got about one and a half kilograms of bacteria. So think of a bottle of milk, right, from the coffee shop. You know, that's, that's a fair bit of bacteria. And they, they're there for a good reason. They colonise you after you're born and they're there to help you digest food. Uh, and what, that's what we call the good bacteria. And we know that a healthy gut has a good microbiota balance and that promotes good health. What happens when you take a broad spectrum antibiotic, which is what we do when we have an infection, because the doctor doesn't know what it is, he just gives you this sort of grenade uh, antibiotic, is you kill off a lot of the good flora. If you kill off the good bacteria, the bad bacteria can come up. So, you know, antibiotics aren't just wonder drugs, there can be long-term effects. That said, they save lives. So if you're seriously ill and you have pneumonia or a complicated urinary infection or a meningitis, you know, if you don't take antibiotics, you could die. So we've got to use them more wisely, I think. That's the answer. A lot of my friends um, uh, think that whenever you, you're sick, you, you get a common cold or, or flu, uh, you should go to the doctors, get some antibiotics to fix you up. Um, is, that, is that true? No. Uh, yeah, so that's another problem. You know, in science we know that there are different types of microbes. There's fungi, uh, there's bacteria, and there's viruses. Okay, now antibiotics only work against bacteria. They only work on bacterial infections. Most of the time, if you've got a cold or the flu, it's called by a virus. So cold, it could be a virus called RSV or um, many other types of viruses. If it's the flu, it's usually influenza. Um, now the antibiotics won't do anything there, so you're taking the drug but it's actually doing you no good at all, or it's actually doing some damage to your microbiota. Now, if you've got the man flu, well just man up. Have a paracetamol, <laughs> nip a whiskey and take it easy. What are scientists doing about the superbug problem? Scientists are doing a couple of things. One, they're trying to engineer old antibiotics that were forgotten, that may be toxic to the liver or the kidney, so they weren't used, which means they've been put on the shelf and so they, the bugs haven't seen them. They're trying to make them safer. They're also going to weird places, so people are going into deep caves underground and the bottom of the oceans and, you know, 
you know, looking at asteroids, they're, they're going to weird, weird places. But it shows you how desperate the situation is. We're having to go to these places that we've never been to before to try and find the next antibiotic. Even, even microbes in the soil, I heard, as well. Um, yeah, and look, a lot of the antibiotics come from natural products. If you go back to the evolution argument we started with, um, this is all about Charles Darwin again. Uh, microbes have been at this for three and a half billion years. As a species, we're only a couple of million years old. But bacteria have been in this sort of chemical warfare with each other for billions of years. So they've evolved compounds that will kill other bacteria. Um, so most of our antibiotics actually come from natural products. The other approach we're doing, again, is community-based. You've heard the word community from me several times, and we really think that science as a community is the way forward. So we're actually reaching out to chemists around the world and saying, OK, you've got all these chemicals you've made, and uh, now there are more than 90 million chemicals that mankind has made. It's a big number. But they've never been tested. Maybe sitting on the shelf of the University of Queensland Chemistry Department, or a lab in Tanzania or Chile, there is a compound that could be the next antibiotic. So we've launched the Community for Open Antimicrobial Drug Discovery, or COAD, as another way to try and reach out in a crowdsourcing approach to find the next new drug against the superbug. You know, what, what we're trying to do now is to educate um, you know, the public how to think twice about these valuable drugs, but also the politicians. And so, I mean, I'm not a, a superbug scientist. Um, what can people like me do to help with the problem? You know, stay healthy. Balanced diet, plenty of vitamins, vegetables are great. Good for your microbiota, good for your immune system. Wash your hands. It's a simple thing. And, you know, those bacterial alcohol wipes are, are okay, but soap and water is actually probably the best practice. Um, and I'd say the main thing is when you do have a, a cold or the flu, don't go to a GP saying, look, I really need antibiotics. Because you might be wrong. You know, we know at least 30% of cases antibiotics are prescribed. So as a community, we can work together and think about it. The other thing is, you know, support researchers. Um, antibiotic researchers are a dying species. They're an endangered species now. So pharmaceutical companies have left the field. Uh, back in 1990, which is not that long ago, uh, there were more than uh, 15, no, more than 20 companies actually working in antibiotic R&D. Today there are four. Uh, so the number of people working on this problem is getting less and less and less every year. Oh, thanks a lot for joining us, Matt. It was great to have you on Science Over Coffee. My real pleasure. Um, coffee is great. Uh, good talking to you and good luck. Yeah. There's a superbug. I better get it. <laughs> <coughs> oh. Today we learnt that antibiotics probably won't help the common cold. While scientists are on the case to discover new antibiotics to stay one step ahead of the superbugs, we can all do our part. Speaking of which, I better go wash my hands. See you next time on Science Over Coffee.